and we are live. What's going on, Concrete? Not too much. Happy, Happy New Year. I know, girl. Oh my gosh, I forgot. We haven't done that <laughs> show since 2020 started, huh? All right. Happy New Year, everybody. It sounds funny even to say that. Like, and I have to write, I actually hand write, doc, uh, sign documents at work. And I've been like, you know, doing my little 2020. And I'm like, you know how the first like few weeks you have to get used to it? Mm hmm. Girl, so I'm still getting used to it. But um, how has your new year been thus far? So far, so freaking excellent. Um, everything is starting off with a good bang. I hope I'm able to keep the momentum. So, you know, I get like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. But everything is going really, really well so far. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited. Well, dope, dope, dope. Same for me. Everything has been going really, really good. Now that the holidays are over, I'm going to, you know, try to buckle down and kind of shift my focus and stuff. And we'll be back to our regular schedule. So we'll be doing our Sundays and our Wednesdays. So make sure y'all continue to tune in. I know um, I think Christmas and New Year's Day both fell on a Wednesday. So the last yes. two weeks we haven't done um, our midweek show, but we'll be we're, we're back at it this week. So make sure you guys tune in. Right, right, right. We're looking forward to it. We got some shit coming for y'all, too, so. Absolutely. You know, child. <laughs> Absolutely. So, hello to everybody who's down in the chat. I'm going to grab my um, iPad in a minute so I can kind of. You're going to be able to see the chat today? Hi, Dan. Yeah, I'm going to grab it in a minute. Li I literally put it on the charger like 20 minutes ago, so I'm going to give it like 10 more minutes, and I'm going to grab it so I can kind of interact with people in the chat. Um, honey. But about this topic, though. Oh, honey, let's get into it. <laughs> let's let's hop right on into it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the topic being how sisters basically pushed brothers to the arms of other women or women of other races, and um, I know that you know the brothers ain't gonna be happy with this topic. <laughs> I know they probably going to be down there talking smack and, you know, chopping at the bits to get up here. And we will certainly give them the chance to do that because this can be triggering. You know, this can be triggering. And the, the um, you saw the actual um, prop photo that was used um, for our topic with uh, Jeezy and Jeannie Mai. Um, you know, that that's a, um, a great example of um, you know, maybe how possibly we have pushed men to the arms of other women or, you know, just a great example of, um, you know, what people from the outside looking in may be thinking that Jeezy seems to be happier over there. I've seen mm -hmm. those yeah. throughout, throughout um, social media, you know, on different platforms, people saying, oh, he seems so happy. He, you know, Look, you know, just kind of giving him kudos for going to the other side. So, did that ever trigger you to see him um, when he went to the other side? Um, for me, it's like there's not like a, um, I, it's not like a personal thing for me. Like I'll see one person or some specific black man, and it tr it's triggering to me. Like I am. Um, against dating out period. So I, you know, prefer if none of our men did, but whether it's Jeezy or, you know, um, you know, um, Glenn from down the street, I, I you know, I, I prefer that, you know, we kind of keep it in house. So I wasn't triggered per se by it. I mean, I rolled my eyes like, look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was triggered. I was like, ah, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Tell us about it. Why were you triggered? Um, okay. So the fact that he's a rapper and he's hood and he would be considered select means that he would have his uh share, he could he could have his pick of pretty much um whatever woman he wanted, right? Mm -hmm. And so this means he gets to choose from the top notch uh black chicks. Mm -hmm. Top notch. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't necessarily say top notch white women, but we'll get back to that. 
in a sense. But um, yeah, I would feel like he would have his uh, pick from the top notch black chick. So like being that you have like status and you have money and you, you, you carry yourself a certain way, you can have your pick. So then when you go over to the other side, it kind of makes me look like, well, goddamn. So you're just going to go over there? Like, so, so that's so what you're going to do? Mean, does that mean that you don't care if the average everyday brother go over there because maybe not, they can't necessarily have their pick, but you want our select men kept in-house? I mean, well, I'm thinking, just playing devil's advocate. Uh-huh. Oh, yes? Okay. <laughs> well, well, no, no. I would actually, if, if I had my choice, if I had my choice, I would have uh, our race date our race, you know? Yeah. And um, I don't, it's like, okay, I understand why some men do leave. I, and I get it. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm not necessarily mad at it, but I'm not going to lie and say it doesn't uh, trigger me a little bit when I see a mm -hmm. successful uh, black man with another race of women. I can't lie and say that doesn't trigger me a little bit because the thing to me is, when they don't have anything and we're the ones to build them up and then they go to the other side, it's like, well, God damn, um, you really could have had whoever you wanted mm -hmm. in a sense, but then, you know, um, it becomes a thing where you see all the other men kind of leaving and um, the stuff that they say about us. So then, you know, I get really get to wondering like, well, God damn, you know, are we really this bad? Are we the ones pushing them away? What's really going on? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Now I remember previously some years back, like I think uh, he had dated um, Keisha Cole. Is right. Oh gosh. Sure that, like, <laughs> sticks out in my head. Um, and yeah. I, you know, I can't think of any high pro other high profile women that he dated aside from her, but, um, you know, maybe he, he, maybe she was giving him so much attitude and he had a bad experience or he has had bad experiences with black women. So he wanted to try something different and that's what drew him to, um, Jeannie Mai. Yeah, child. I guess. I mean, you know that's what the brothers <laughs> gonna say, anyways. So, with no proof, no evidence, but that's what they're gonna claim. So, <laughs> but the interesting thing, like, I personally don't really care for Jeannie. She seems like self-absorbed and so aloof, and like, Fake. I mean, I, I'm not. I don't watch The View, but like, whenever I see clips of it, she's always making like some some saying some, you know, offhand well, stuff. This is the thing that kind of um, messed with my my um, my head a because she literally said that she wanted um, like she would marry a white man. Mm -hmm. and she said this out of her mouth, and y'all can go and look for the uh, the what you get. Y'all can look for the clip. She yeah. said she would marry a white man, but she would want a black man for sex. Mm -hmm. And so then it kind of comes to. Um, if a black woman dates a white man, you know, they'll claim that uh, these white men have fetish fetishized us. And so when it comes down to them, I wonder, do they think they're being fetishized as well? Like, does it matter? You know, I think that that is a very good question. And I do wonder if they realize that they are absolutely being fetishized. Some of the key things that I hear in the manosphere regarding them dating out is, um, oh, well, we're fetishized because they'll sleep with us, but they're not marrying us. But that doesn't mean, you know, the, the whether or not um, a man and woman marries, the ultimate, um, the ultimate person to make that decision would be the man because they're the ones that are going to go out on a limb and ask the woman to marry them. So just if you're fetishized by another race of women, but you're so caught up in you know, um, you're, you know, so smitten and so caught up in whatever your situation is with women of other races that you decide to pop the question. That doesn't mean that you're, that does not negate the fact that you're just being fetishized. You're just so caught up that you, you know, want to live in la la land or, you know, live this fairy tale for the rest of your days. So you're popping the question, you know, mm -hmm. like that, that, that is, um, something that you control. So I, I think that that's a very good question. Um, 
I, I, you know, let me tell you something. I grew up around um, nothing but white people. And I can't say that I've ever heard people of other races talk about um, the awesome characteristics that black men um that black men hold aside from you know their, their physicality right 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 but you know on that same note a lot of time um you hear the, the popular narrative that women of other races are um better options um that you know men who have bought into or have decided to marry out or date out, uh, you know, that they have, they're happier and things of that nature. But one thing that I've seen, um, and just, and this isn't to say that I see this all the time, but a lot of the men, I'm seeing men or young guys who have had minimal experience with black women, like, and they admit it, admittedly say, well, there, uh, it was a, a show in the Manosphere, and I can't remember whose channel it was on, but a guy was on there, and he was um, married to a woman of another race, and he was admitting that he had only dated two women, two black women prior to that, like prior to um, deciding to date out. He said, um, you know, he I think like he dated one when he was 19 and one when he was in college or something, and that was it for him. But he said he saw men of other race, like, you know, his brothers or family members date black women. So he was kind of judging through their experiences that he didn't want, you know, he, he wanted to go with a woman of another race. And I think that right. that's completely unfair because, it, you know, there are however many million black women just, you know, in, in this country alone. And if you can say, oh, well, judging off of he had a bad experience, not knowing the full scope of what he did oh. that led to that and not saying that he is to be faulted, but um, and say, oh, well, because he had a bad experience, I'm not even going to try to, you know, um, date inside my own race. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Um, so let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you think that we as black women have pushed our men to other women? Do you think that? No. And the reason that I don't is because I think that they go to the other side because they have a burning desire to see what it is. Like, I think that, you know, other races of women have been pedestalized and put on this pedestal for other men to look at, but you can't touch. So I think that there's been a long burning desire to, you know, like, like you put a, a, a jar of cookies on a table and you tell a child, um, you, you know, these, these are for decoration. You can't touch them, you know, and the child is in the back of their mind trying to figure out how they can get one of those cookies. Like they're scheming and plotting and like, okay, how can I get one of these cookies without getting in trouble? Right. So I think that, you know, they've always had this desire to, you know, kind of eat the cookie. So as a result, they're using any and every excuse to say, oh, hey, it's because you guys won't do X, Y, and Z that, you know, I'm going to find comfort in the arms of women of, of, of other races. So do you feel like, okay, because I kind of feel like, okay, certain men can extract certain things from women, right? Mm -hmm. And usually if the man has money, power, resources, he pretty much can extract the femininity from women. Do you think that that's something that they have to have to like in order to get the best type of woman, in order to get the feminine women, do you feel like men have to have all of those things to get the best type of woman, to get the most feminine woman? Um, no, I personally don't think that you have to have those things. I think that you have to have self-worth. And I think that you have to, you know, believe in yourself as a man and you have to have a high set of standards as a result. So I think that standards is going to be key in, you know, what you can attract. But I believe that somehow our men feel that if they can marry out, that they'll be seen as more successful, that they'll be, you know, envied by their peers, they'll be accepted, you know, they'll get a seat at the table, that their children will be better off, that 
you know, somehow they can escape the black community and be different from those ninjas over there. You know, I, I'm different. Um, so they feel that, you know, they if they run to the arms of you know, women of other races, that they'll have a better life somehow. And it's crazy because what some of the main complaints that we hear our men um, complain about, you know, basically that we've bought into this feminist uh, mindset and feminist ideologies that, you know, we don't respect our men. Like uh, you're running to the mother of these these this I, these ideologies. Like you're running to mm-hmm. you think that it's going to be better over there. The di- only difference is they're more charming and more cunning. We're just outright this what it is. You know, we're not going to play the game. So then when men bring up the argument, because this is what I've heard from most men, right? Damn, y'all don't think we're good enough to get any type of one, um, any other races of women without these women having thing and um, whatever, whatever. Y'all don't really feel like we're good enough to get these type of women when we should have been. And and, and and to a certain degree, I've been feeling like they'll be thinking that they're good enough for us in a certain degree, to a certain degree. But I feel like we've treated them like that. Does that make sense? Um, I think, and I don't think it's a matter of us not thinking that they are good enough. I think we realize uh, that shit. they're not. <laughs> what is that from? Because of men, and if we're being honest, if we be all the way, all the way with it, if we be all the way with it now, um, most of the guys that we've seen that are from the MGTOW uh, mm-hmm. MGTOW, uh, Idmore, um, SYSBM, mm-hmm. I say that these men probably didn't consider themselves select at one point, right? Yeah. Did you say that? Yeah, I can agree with that. Okay. So, if they didn't see themselves as select at one point, um, we've treated them like that as well. At one point, we treated them like that. We treated them like right. they weren't shit in high school. We didn't want to talk to them. We didn't want to date. Want to know parts of them? They ain't have mm-hmm. no swag. They ain't know how to dress. They were socially awkward. Um, we ain't want shit to do with them, right? Mm-hmm. So, but the niggas we were chasing, they had the new J's. They was driving to school already. They ain't take the bus. They had all the women surrounded. somewhat like that. And I kind of look at it like, okay. Um, And not to say that those guys weren't smart because I know uh, I grew up in a generation where it wasn't just about jocks and, uh, you know, guys that play sports. It was like a lot of smart school, but they had girls too. You know what I mean? But we really, I want to say that everybody wanted the select man at some point. And these guys were ignored. Um, We treated them like shit. And so I had made a point, I was on Ren's panel earlier this morning and I made the point that um, I feel like other races of women are taught to respect all men, but black women kind of feel like the men have to earn her respect. Uh, at least the, the, the ones that I would say that they want. Does that make sense? Um, I'm not following you. I mean, okay. I, I, so well, I understand what you said about, you know, um, how we treated men. I understand yeah. that, but what do you mean about um, us feeling like, I mean, where's the tie-in regarding us feeling like men have to earn our respect? I guess that's where my... Okay. If Black men, if certain types of Black men approach us, we automatically look at them like they aren't shit if they don't. And I and I'm not gonna just say this with black men. I'm gonna just say this with people in general. Mm-hmm. If a person approaches us and they don't look a certain way, they don't act a certain way, they don't talk a certain way, we already um looking at them. Uh, we're looking down on them in a sense. Mm-hmm. Like fuck you talking to me for? I don't want fucking talking to him. Ew. Mm-hmm. And so you know that kind of brings me back to the point. Like we think we're better than them in a sense, right? And so then when they go and choose other races of women, do we even really have a right to say anything to to them when we've looked down on them at a certain point? Well, I think that, you know. And I'm going to get back to the respect thing in a second. 
uh, just like there are, you know, select groups of men, there are, in a, there, in a sense, there are select groups of women. There are women who are preferred by most men, you know, that most men would prefer to date. Um, there are average men and women in, you know, every race or, you know. So I think that, um, you know, from my experience, I, I can't say like, choosing not to date someone or not being attracted to someone that's not being treated like crap to me that's the luck of the draw like uh, i mean there are you you an average dude you may have to work a little harder but there are beautiful women or beautiful young girls even when we were in high school that most of the guys were chasing after you know what i mean like so i don't think that i, I mean i don't think that um it is to me, it ain't that serious. Like they're you're an average guy. Like you want nobody was checking for you, but nobody was checking for the the average or below average women in in high school. Not to the degree that they were checking for the select people. So I mean, I don't know. I I, I think that I I get what you're saying, and I know that a lot of the men that we see in these spaces were the guys that went, girl young young women and young girls decided to pass over. So they've decided to date outside the race. Yeah. I think that that's what they wanted to do anyway. It's like, I don't think that, um, you know, it's because of the fact that they couldn't get the girl that they wanted, that they, they wanted to date outside the race anyways. And, and sometimes, and their desire to date outside the race um, may not be something that they realized until they had the opportunity to date someone outside the race. So they may not even realize that they had this burning desire, this real intense desire to, you know, date outside the race. I think that that's where they're probably more comfortable at because of the fact that, you know, maybe they do feel more accepted over there. And it's because of the fact that those women are going to be more charming. They're not as, direct as you know women in our race if a woman in our race isn't feeling you you know she's gonna let it be known um so i don't mm. know if that answered your question but uh, you know i don't think that that's a reason a valid reason for because you were passed over in high school i've been passed over by guys that i wanted like uh, i mean i'm not leaving the brothers though I'm, the, you know, like they, the, a lot of the things that they say and the excuses that they give for, you know, dating outside, it's not like women didn't have to endure the same thing. Black but, but the difference, endure, huh? The difference is, this is mm -hmm. the difference. The men don't have children. Well, they're not single. Uh, they're not single mothers like us. Um, they don't have the same baggage that we have now. So and how does that relate though? Like because they're not single mothers, I, I mean well, they're not relate? because okay, we we got reject let's say we got rejected by a certain man or certain men or whatever. We still ended up dealing with somebody we liked because we, we had babies, right? Some of us, yes. Yeah. So if we had the babies and we got to some of the men that we liked. Then the men who we didn't really want grew up and they became successful and they developed into them. They came into themselves. They developed the confidence and the attitude mm -hmm. and they look back and they say, well, God damn, um, she got two kids. She got a kid. She got a kid. I don't want to be nobody's damn stepdaddy. I don't want to um, I, I don't want to come clean up what I didn't break. Is it fair for us to look for them to do that? Well, I think we're talking about multiple different things. So for me, sure. there's like one that's that's a segment of the the group of black women. Like we are we outnumber heterosexual men over 2 to 1. So if you say 50% of the race, all 60% mm. of the race already have um children and you know and I'm not willing to date women with children. The other, there are other women who don't fit into that category. I think that we have gone through the same thing and we have not shown the same level of disloyalty. Black women have been, have endured disrespect and, you know, various forms of abuse, abandonment. Um, and now, and now we're dealing with alienation and we still aren't leaving. And they like to say it's because we can't. That's not true. Like men of other races are attracted to black women. And I'm going to tell you something. I And I hear men say this in this same space. 
Okay. When black women generally date outside their race, they don't act out in the way they do to our men. And I don't know the reasoning be- hot behind that because I haven't put a lot of thought into it. But when a black woman is dating outside the race, men of other races are willing to date black women, but they got to leave that BS at the door is essentially what it is. Mm. Um. Now you said something about you not really hearing it from the women, but then I got to kind of look at it and um, look at the space that we're in, right? Being that we're in the mental sphere, um, we do see a lot of disparaging remarks about Black women. But if you go to the divestment community and go look at some of uh, videos, oh, they talk big shit about Black men. Big shit. Yeah, and so, and I, didn't say I, didn't, I didn't hear it from the, okay. the women. I'm, I was saying that we're not leaving and we're not showing the level of disloyal being as disloyal as the men. Like the numbers show that if you look at statistics, you know, men dating out and just going off of the, the, the sheer numbers and, you know, studies and things of that nature, you can see that men are dating out at a much higher rate than women are, right. or, you know, leaving the community at a higher rate. So that's what I meant. Just we're not leaving in the we're not there's not a mass exodus of women. There's not a true SYSBW with women saying, oh, we're leaving and we're going to find happiness where we're appreciated type of thing. OK. I'd be kind of looking at it and. You know, my thing kind of goes back to being that these aren't the men that we wanted at one point. Mm-hmm. We didn't we didn't want them. We didn't want them. Mm-hmm. We we told them to kick rocks. And then when they do kick rocks, <laughs> do we have sour grapes behind it? I have sour I have sour behind it in a certain sense. Yeah. I have sour grapes behind it. And I don't know if I'm well within my rights to have sour grapes behind it because I went through uh, being rejected as well. But like I said, I think that the kids, the out of wedlock births really make a difference with us Mm -hmm. because I would say that a lot of women with that are single mothers are pretty feminine. If I'm going to say so myself, I think we're kind of feminine. I think so. I think that that's just an excuse for them. I think that they're, they're not all black women have children. I know a ton of black women who don't have children. In addition, if you just look at the numbers, you know, there's what 40, 30, upwards of 38 percent or something of black women who don't have children. Um, so not all black women have children. So I think that that's just a talking point for them. But I understand what you're saying regarding, you know, us having sour grapes behind it. And I just want to say that, like, We've like I, I endured the same thing. Let me tell you something. Like I, I was not preferred because I'm dark skinned. Like I was. In addition, I was one of three black children in my high school. So oh. by the time I graduated high school, um, and even prior to that, like m- people started to move to the town that I lived in from Chicago, and most of the people that moved there, it was like mainly guys. The guys wanted the white chicks. They was not checking for me. I was one of 10. My mom had 10 kids. So I did not have my own car in high school. I was not allowed to work in high school because I, you know, ran track and I was in all kinds of, you know, excelling in just different academia um, and just all kinds of programs, F, uh, SBCLA and just all kinds of different things. So I was not allowed to work work in high school and even if I was I wasn't giving you money and going and buying you clothes and that just wasn't my thing so they preferred to date white women and I was not salty about it and saying oh you know I'm gonna get me like white dudes were trying to were checking for me like white guy let me tell you even as an adult a young adult there were white men who were very successful by the time I was a young adult that wanted to date me seriously and i'm the reason that i say that you have to leave your bs at the door is because those were like things that i would be met with like oh i'll marry you i already own my house you know but you ain't gonna be able to do x y and z and i'm like what i'm not even checking for you like i'm not interested you know so and these were guys who like 
Maybe my concrete, he wasn't was with it. <laughs> no, like, come on now, seriously. I, I, no, that's repulsive to me. But, um, you know, I'm just saying, like, we've all endured some stuff. Like, and if you're that, if you go to the other side, it's because you truly want to. I can't say it's because, you know, you people weren't checking for you in school. Like, I went through the same thing. People, like, the guys weren't checking for me. Seriously, they were not checking for me. Then, um, by the time I graduated high school, you know, the, there were college kids that were coming into the town that I lived in from Florida and, diff, you know, Chicago and stuff like that. So older guys would be, you know, um, attracted to me, but all through junior high, high school, they like, nah, sis, where the white chicks at, <laughs> you know? So, you know, it was and like I where the white never, women ever, ever dated a white guy. Like never. I was like, nah, I'm I'm gonna wait it out. So do you feel like black men are being disloyal to their race when they're dating out? Yes. <laughs> well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I want you to kind of expound on that. Well, I think that they are being disloyal to their race because you most often they are um, dating someone that burst our oppressor. So I think that, yeah, you know, absolutely. You're being disloyal to your race. You're being treasonous. And uh, uh, one thing that I want to say, I have um, definitely been more open to hearing men who date out and their reasons behind it. And I have developed some compassion for you know, their reasons, um, okay. which I did not have in the past. So this platform has been eye opening for me for that reason. Yeah. However, yeah. I'm also one of those people that when you go over there, stay over there. <laughs> like I don't want you back. So I'm not mad and saying, oh, you need to come back here and date marry your sister. No, stay, yo stay over there, <laughs> you know? So. Mm -hmm. Um, initially, initially I would, I would say that I had the same attitude, mm -hmm. but kind of understanding, um, I was telling somebody earlier today that I've kind of been where I felt like I was a non-select woman, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was really like the person who went from the ugly duckling to the swan. Yeah. You had to glow up, sis. I did. I really did. Oh, me too. And so, <laughs> and so it's like um, the guys that weren't checking for me back in high school, of course, when I grew up and my ass sprouted and you know, I, when I uh, glowed up, mm -hmm. the guys came and they came and they came. And so it was like, um, hell no, I don't want y'all now. You know, like right. back then you ain't want me. Now I'm hot you up. That's the attitude I had. Right. Right. And so being that I felt like I was kind of um, like, I felt like I was a non-select female, like guys was running over my ass, especially when I was skinny mm -hmm. girl, they was knocking my ass off the way to get to big booty, big booty Brenda. And so, <laughs> <laughs> then you start spreading, huh? Them hips start spreading. Child. <laughs> <laughs> so then it's like um, being that I went through somewhat of what they went through, I get it, you know, um, but then a lot of the shit has a lot to do with me and my self-esteem and how um, the expectations that I had for me and what I was with it. Uh, I won't necessarily say I did the Pookie and Ray Ray, so to speak, but I used to like hoes. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I like to be the next child. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get you. Like you wanted to be charmed. You like. Charmed right. I, right. I, I, I'm going through that, too. So Right. And so when I got to a certain point, okay, mm -hmm. this select motherfucker, I ain't call him select, but I'm like, this whole ass nigga ain't going to do anything for me. He, yeah. he ain't really, all he want to do is fuck. And <laughs> we're going to have to use some shit, but it wasn't really anything long term. And so then mm -hmm. it came to a point where I had to look up and say, um, girl, what you really want? What do you really want out of life? Um, I didn't want to become a mul multiple baby mama over and over right. again with all these right. damn children and, and stuff like that, and especially um, when things didn't work out with my son's father. So it's mm -hmm. like, well, what do you really want out of life? Um, and then I, I, I ended up on Facebook 
Facebook kind of led me um, to conversations about incels and um, guys that are MGTOW, right? Mm -hmm. So I get to Facebook and I see them saying all this shit about black women. And when I say they said a bunch of shit and it, it probably about the same that we've heard on here or worse. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so then, you know, I began to take a look and really started uh, watching people, talking to older people, talking to people that have been married for years and stuff like that. And a lot of them said the same thing. A lot of it has a lot to do with our attitudes and the way we treat them. Oh, yeah. And, I, and I'm sorry if I've been dismissive of that. We got some screwed up attitudes. And I will never deny that. That's something that needs to be checked. It is not something that you know, you sh men should continue to positively reinforce by just saying, oh, yeah, you got to screw it up, but you a sister, so I'm going to date you. That's not what I'm encouraging at all whatsoever. I'm encouraging dating good black women. That's what I'm encouraging. But, you know, I uh, now I never thought that it was me because of the fact that I live, I came from, you know, all black city and like dudes was checking for me. I had my little boyfriend and whenever I would go home, you know, like it was never, I knew what it was. I like, look, I, I had white friends. I knew like they'd be like, oh, go to the mall with me so I can get him a Tommy Hilfiger shirt. And, you know, he has my car. I can't do such and such. I'm left at work because he's riding around with Rachel and my, like I knew what it was. So, you know, I'm not just guessing. Like I hung around with white chicks. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's all that was in the town. So um, I knew it wasn't me. I was like, you know, these dudes tripping. So, and then I have to say, but you know, like I was always, you know, kind of curvy by the you know, once I became um, probably 12 years old, I started to develop curves. So, like, I knew, you know, I, I knew it wasn't me. I, I, I never thought that it was me. I realized, it, I realized it was what it was. And those guys, after they knocked up, you know, several different white chicks, you know, they would be coming around and, oh, man, you ain't never messed with me. And what's up with it? I'm like, and I ain't messing with you now, <laughs> you know? So they would come around after they were washed, so to speak. <laughs> Told you. They get the vapors, but I think I think Black women have the vapors now. <laughs> <laughs> like, where, where are y'all going? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you know, and, and like, uh, when... I, I am working on developing more of a level of understanding for the people who feel like um, for people specifically who still um, support the community as best as they can, even though they have decided to, you know, step out and date outside the race. So I still feel like you're treasonous and that you're not to be trusted, but you know, there's a role for there's a role for you. There's a role for you. It ain't on, on the front lines, you know what I mean? But um I'm I'm working on, you know, trying to find more understanding and more compassion. Like I do understand that look, look, you know, you were rejected. I get it, and you're still hurt about it. But I think that. But when if they're saying, okay, you know, yeah, I was rejected. I didn't got my shit together. What's wrong with these hoes now? You know, why they so goddamn mean? What's wrong with them concrete? Why they can't just be nice? I don't want to come in arguing every fucking day of my life. I didn't came, I didn't work a, a 12 hour day. I just want a hot meal, a clean house, some good head. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. What's the problem? I think that the the solution for people who have endured you know horrible things in their childhood is therapy not the oppressor but <laughs> i think i also in, in response to your question you get us shot. <laughs> in response to your question i think that um don't don't pick a woman that's gonna have a nasty attitude that that you're gonna have to come home and argue with that ain't gonna have your meal cooked that you know ain't gonna have your water ran that you know ain't gonna ensure that she has cooked or fixed your lunch and put a lovely note in there telling you how much she loves you like but they out there trust me we we out there you know what yeah, I mean? too. <laughs> yeah come on now well i'm getting ready to drop the link embrace oh, yourself Lord. oh lord I gotta go. All right, I'm gonna head out. <laughs>
Where's the SpongeBob meme at? <laughs> right. Gracious <laughs> honey. Because they about to get in our ass. Yes. <sighs> okay. There it is. Mm -hmm. I dropped the link. I already now, know who's gonna come up talking smack, but seriously. Probably Roger and Donnie. Um, I spoke to Donnie in the back chat. Oh shit, the mm -hmm. back chat uh earlier. And um he said he was coming. He was coming. Oh Lord. Gab said we sound damn pick me's. Oh wow, we how we sound like pick me's. He ain't he can't be listening to the same show for the year if we sound like pick me's. Give it.